Hi class, Mrs. Miller here to give you a quick refresher about the hero's journey. So today your task is going to be to apply this 12-step hero's journey to a new text, chapter 9 of the Odyssey. This is that famous part of the Odyssey that's about the Cyclops Polyphemus. So I want to just quickly refresh your memories about how even though the Odyssey is a huge epic story, it's an epic poem that's about the heroic journey of Odysseus over 10 years to get home from the Trojan War, we can really look at each of these chapters almost as if they are themselves a heroic journey. And so that's what you'll be doing today. You're going to be reading chapter 9, and chapter 9 is introduced with a lot of other um, information and kind of gives you the context of what's going on and where Odysseus is. And then he begins to tell the story of the Cyclops. It's that story of the Cyclops that I want you to focus on. And I want you to focus on each of these steps, uh, these 12 steps of the, her the hero's journey. And you'll be filling out one of those forms um, that we used in class before, where you'll be identifying each of those stages uh, based on your reading. So the first step you're going to do, of course, is to read the text. Um, and you're welcome to annotate that. That's a great idea. And um, do that as we've done it in class and the assignment uh, includes those instructions and then you'll be thinking about as you're reading thinking about each of these steps so let's just do a quick review and think about that myth of Theseus that we read in class so Theseus's ordinary world is when he's in Athens right with his father the king and life's going on pretty well and Theseus is um, pretty much trying to be kind of a cool guy he's trying to do some cool things um, and then he gets this call to adventure. And if you remember, that's when he is uh, hearing those wails and those sobs from people uh, who are um, lamenting the fact that they may, may be chosen as a tribute to go to um, uh, King Minos in Crete and be, and be uh, sacrificed to the Minotaur. The refusal comes from his father. His father does not want him to go. Aegeus wants, wants his son, whom he's m fairly recently um, gotten to know, to stay there. He doesn't want to give him up. So that's where the refusal comes in. So that's our call to adventure. Then we move into this second quadrant here, which is that ordeal and the initiation. So he's crossing over now into this, away from this ordinary world, which is the top half of the circle, into this, this extraordinary world, this different world. And so his mentor is someone he meets fairly soon, and that's Ariadne in the story of Theseus. And she's, of course, um, King Minos's daughter, who is can't stand the idea of Theseus um, being sacrificed to the Minotaur and she wants to help him. So she does that, you'll remember, by giving him the string. He crosses the threshold, that is, he goes into the labyrinth where he is looking for the Minotaur. He goes through several tests and depending on the version that you're reading, or you're familiar with, he's tested by the darkness, he's tested by the stench in this labyrinth or this maze. Um, he does not come across any allies at this point. He do, still does have the string, which in a sense is an ally for him, provided by his mentor helper, Ariadne. So then we begin this transformation. And so this is really his big test. This section is where we see, um, uh, we see Theseus approaching. He's trying to figure out where the Minotaur is. He's working his way through the maze. Um, and then we go into this ordeal. And this is really like the climactic scene, if you will. This is where he's fighting with the Minotaur. And, and we go into all of the, the detail and, and the description and the imagery to understand this um, terrible fight that the two of them are having and that he twists the head um, off of the Minotaur. The reward, of course, is that he finds his way back out and he has, he has indeed slain the Minotaur and so there will be no more sacrifices um, by the young people of Athens. 
So again, depending on the story that you're reading, then we go into this road back. And the road back in some versions of the story, as you know, um, suggest that Ariadne has fallen in love with Theseus and he's not really crazy about that idea and he kind of ditches her on an island. Um, and goes off without her. Other stories suggest that she chooses to stay by herself um, and he he goes back without her, but the reward there is of course still that he has he has slain the Minotaur. Um, still other versions suggest that the two of them run away and they come back together. At either way, it doesn't matter which version you're reading, this road back um, suggests that they are so happy, so pleased with what they've done that, of course, they forget to change the sails. And the sails, remember, were the signal for Aegeus, uh, Theseus's father, that all was well and that uh, he is indeed alive and, and has killed the Minotaur. The atonement may be the hardest part for some students to think about. This is kind of like the payback, you know, what what is it that you have to sacrifice that this that this um, hero has to give up, has to sacrifice in this entire journey. And of course, in this case, he sacrifices his father. Um, his sacrifice is his father's death. Remember, he forgets to change the sails. And so his father, thinking that, that Theseus has died when he sees the black sails, fl uh, flings himself off of the cliffs and into the sea, indeed the sea that is now known as the Aegean Sea after King Aegeus. So Theseus gives up for his, um, his triumph here in killing the Minotaur, he gives up his father. It's the, the price he has to pay is a good way to think about atonement. What's the price he has to pay? And in this case, the price he pays for his revelry, for his celebration, for his um, excitement about all of this reward is that he forgets to change the sail and his father dies. The gods, if you will, take his father from him. That's the price he has to pay. His return then, of course, is that he now is king of Athens uh, because of his father's death. And so he has come, uh, started out as prince um, with a, a kind of a mission in mind. He's gone through this challenge, this ordeal with mentor helper. He has um, achieved incredible, um, an incredible feat. Uh, against great odds with the Minotaur. He has won a reward. He's celebrated and forgotten to put the sails up. He's paid the price and he returns transformed into someone different. And so that completes the heroic journey. So your job, again, is to use this hero's journey, this wheel, and to consider this particular chapter of the Odyssey, which reveals the story of Polyphemus, the Cyclops, how that story reflects each of these elements of the hero's journey. And if you feel that there's a part that's not uh, included in this story, that's fine. You're welcome to um, explain that on the chart that you'll be completing, the one that's similar to what we've done in class. So that's your job, that's your task. I'm looking forward to the uh, analysis that you're able to, to create. And do let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help you um, during school on Thursday and Friday. Thank you.